So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us on this Wednesday evening. Uh, we've got a really fantastic workshop lined up for you over the next 60 minutes. Uh, we want to make sure that we use each and every minute of it to offer value to you if you're looking to apply to business school, um, especially in the United States, and especially if you're applying to business school for fall this year. Um, applications are still open multiple places um, till about June 1st. So you've got sort of two weeks. If you're finishing up your applications, this is is where you want to be. Any last minute questions, concerns, um, you know, concerns over your SOPs, over essays, uh, how to conduct your interviews, whatever it is uh, about the entire B-School application process, now is the time to ask those questions, ask those concerns. And how are you going to get answers to your questions? It's not going to be me giving you a gun. None of that is happening here. We've got real students telling you all the real deal about how to apply to business school in the United States. We've got three really different students offering up three really different experiences, three very different programs, three very different universities, uh, and very different profiles as well. So I'm really excited for you guys to get to know the students that we have on our panel today. I'm going to let each one of them introduce themselves, and I'm going to ask them some fun, difficult questions as well, because uh, they've cracked their way on Minute to Business School in the United States. Now can they crack the application process for the grad right mentorship program. That's what remains to be seen over the next hour. This is a brand new series, by the way, that we're launching. It's called Blueprint. The idea is to offer up students in India that are looking to apply to business school in the United States, give them a blueprint for success for their study abroad journey. So if that's enough for me. I'm going to get straight to it. Um, we've got a ton of question, people coming in Feel free to use the Q&A box to ask those questions. We want to make sure that we you know, bring value to you. Um, we don't want to be giving you any gyan. We want to make sure that we use this one hour to answer all your questions. If you've got SOPs that you want reviewed, if you're stuck on an essay question, if you're concerned about how to prepare for an interview, whatever it is, we want to make sure that we tap into our students who've already been there, who've already done that, uh, and can answer all of those questions. So I'm going to start with whoever I see first on screen. And hi, good morning. It's Anish. Anish is joining us from Baruch College, CUNY. Can you tell us uh, what you're studying, where we know, but how you got there, okay. and maybe sort of a little bit about your, your background? Sure, sure. Thank you, Priyanka. So hello, everyone. My name is Anish uh, Biju Soman. I'm actually hailing from Trivandrum, Kerala, India. Uh, I basically did my undergrad in mechanical engineering and then pivoted myself to go into management because during that time I realized, okay, that's my focus of interest and that's where I want to be in life. So initially I was working two years back in India in a startup company and then for some time uh, in a growing uh, AI development company. After that, I realized I wanted to do a, a degree in management and MBA seemed like a right way to go. Why New York or why CUNY was the main reason is uh, ever since I was small, like for most Indians, I grew up watching Friends and all those TV series. I wanted to be in New York. So it was a very simple uh, decision for me. I'm not going to apply anywhere else in the world. I'm going to apply only in New York. And yeah, I applied for most of the schools in New York, at least most of the uh, range of schools I could apply with my GMAT score and my undergrad score. And I just applied for a few schools. I got accepted for all of them. And I decided you need to be one of the best for my focus. And I'm doing a general MBA right now. And that is my current goal. And right now, I'm looking for like summer internships and jobs, mainly in the profile of business analytics and operations. Amazing. That's super comprehensive. And I think it's so valuable for students that, you know, might be in exactly the place that you were sort of a couple of months ago, trying to figure out, you know, I have certain, you know, certain ambitions. This is what I want to do. How do I get there? I really want to know about your shortlisting process as well. How did you specifically decide on Baruch? Um, you know, considering all the multiple options that are available out there, we know how you've decided on, on New York. And I think that'll be something that'll be super relatable to so many people who sort of grew up watching Friends and, and other fun shows like that, right? Um, so I'm I'm going to definitely ask a little bit more about that, um, you know, over the course of the next 60 minutes. But Sonu, you're kind of close to New York. Was that ever an option? Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing, where you're doing, and how far from New York you really are? Yeah. Uh, so my name is Sonu Agarwal. I'm a student at NGIT in Martin Tuckman School of uh, Management, enrolled in MSM with my concentration as business analytics. 
Yeah. And uh, last year I came to US just to visit different universities. Like I visited the campus for Rutgers. I visited NJIT. I visited Princeton. So, but uh, NJIT, when I entered NJIT, the vibes, the positive vibes I got from that campus, I really don't know the, the kind of professors I met with them, the words they gave me. And I was like, yes, this is my school. I have to be here. So I started with my application process and all the things I worked on. And my focus was, yes, I have to be in NJIT. Yeah. And NJIT is reachable from Newark. Uh, you can, it is just 30 minutes drive. So it's like, yes, you are in the center. Like, yes. So um, that was also my concern. And I would like to share a little thing. Like yesterday in our university, we had our uh, grad function for the students. So I had a word with all the students who were passing out. And I was like, yes, what's the status for your jobs? Like I've heard that uh, recession is going on and people are afraid that, yes, if we come to US and what will be the job uh, status? So 99% uh, of the students were in job. They have just wow. passed out and they are having jobs in their hands. So that was a motivation for me. That was a motivation for me. Yes, that uh, like we were hearing that the recession is going on. But uh, that made me think, yes, no, I am pretty good. And I will be in a good, in, I'll, I'll get the job when I do my com degree completion. Yeah. You know, you've hit the nail on the head. I think, the, you know, as part of the grad right student community, we get tons of questions and concerns, especially now, right? Everyone's looking at the headlines pouring in, you know, the yeah. world going into recession, you know, banks are failing, all kinds of things are happening. Is this really the right time to go to business school? Um, and I think it's fantastic to hear sort of, you know, real talk from a student that, yeah, this might actually be probably the best time to go in and upskill yourself mm -hmm. and that you're ready for, you know, as, as things sort of bounce yeah. back, you're yeah. prepared. Um, mm -hmm. So fantastic. We've got two folks, you know, one bright bang in the center of New York, one 30 minutes away from New York City. We've got another one joining us. Hi, good morning, Aryan. Aryan is on the other side of the country and closer to Silicon Valley, in, in fact, a very different experience. Uh, Aryan, tell us a little bit about uh, what you're studying, where you're studying, uh, and how you how you chose that program. Thank you, Priyanka, and good to see you again. So my name is Aryan Bharadwaj. Uh, I'm a first year MBA and MS data science student at Willamette University. Uh, it is here in Pacific Northwest. So Pacific Northwest is Oregon, Seattle. I came here because uh, I was really interested in Pacific Northwest. I had friends here. I knew about the area. I really liked it. So I knew it. Uh, I wanted to be here. So I checked these schools in the Pacific Northwest area and like Willamette is ranked second in this area. So it was among my target schools. And um, also one of the things on my radar was to not, not have like huge uh, uh, fees burden for myself. That was pretty clear for me. I had a relatively higher GMAT score. So I leveraged that to get a very good scholarship. And that's why I chose this. Apart from this, uh, I applied for uh, George Washington University in the US and some in the Europe because uh, my Ger my background is like bachelor's in German studies, so I was very interested in the uh, Europe too. Um, I worked for five years before coming for my MBA, and yeah, now I'm here. Yeah, and as uh, Sonu mentioned, uh, yeah, there's a like job market is not doing great well. There were tech layoffs, but Everyone is getting internships and stuff like that. And yeah, from, so we had, we have very good relations with Intel because Intel is right here mm -hmm. in Portland. So a lot of students went there, Morgan Stanley, stuff like that. So yeah, uh, only you have to like, uh, in tough times, you have to be a little more uh, outgoing and like be more uh, into this stuff, go out and you would be good, so yeah. Okay, very exciting. I'm so glad that our, our students can get to know you and sort of see where, what you're doing, where you're from, where you're at. But I think let's all take a take a step back, rewind. You know, just a couple of months ago, all of you were sort of where are the students that are joining us today are, you know, where you're sort of really thinking about, you know, 
filling out all those applications, you know, endless forms, uh, writing your SOPs, customizing each SOP for each program, um, even maybe even debating, you know, like, is, is this program really worth applying to? Is this school really worth applying to? all you know that's it can be quite an overwhelming process right like really making those decisions how do you know you're making the right choice you know is this SOP really selling myself as a candidate how can I make this better so I want to talk about all of those things in greater detail um, and you know we have some questions that are starting to come in and I encourage everyone that's here the whole idea of this is to keep it super raw super candid uh, and you know I've been in events with Sonu and Anaryan before and I can guarantee that they are all about the real talk they'll give you the good the bad the ugly you know no no marketing gimmicks no sales pitches fully real talk. And again, you know, that's the whole idea of this, this hour long process is how do we really make sure, especially if you're applying to business school for, for fall 23. Um, and you know, all three schools, in fact, NGIT, will have met Farouk are accepting applications till, till June 1st. So if you've got specific questions about these programs, these schools, you know, now is the best time to ask them. If you're sort of thinking about, okay, you know, maybe I'll apply to business school uh, next year, Perfect. No time like now to get started. So wherever you are in your journey, uh, I'd encourage you to, to drop those questions in the Q&A box um, and let us know, you know, what is it that we can help you with specifically? Um, oh, fantastic. One question, one interesting question I have to ask, um, you know, all of you, two of you are doing a business analytics track. One of you is doing a, a data science track, you know, totally in, in that Um sort of the tech side of things. Uh, a question coming in, can you talk a little bit about the chat if impact of chat GPT on SOPs and other essays for college applications? Do you recommend students that are applying to business school use chat GPT? Anish, I can see you have something to say on yeah. this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, being in business school, uh, chat GPT is one of the major discussions that we have in every class, regardless of whatever course you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it has a very big impact in our lives right now, especially if you're doing a professional work, uh, chat GPT has a really good impact. But in the case that you asked that you, would you use chat GPT for making your SOPs? You should realize that it's an AI tool where people are asking the same questions again and again. So everyone will be having the same points if you use chat GPT as, uh, you know, for making your SOPs. But at the same time, you should leverage the knowledge that GPT has. You should take up the points that chat GPT has to offer and then recreate your own SOP. Should not be, you know, copy pasting an SOP from chat GPT. Uh, because I am very sure plagiarizing tools and all the other tools will be used by, you know, rec recruiters or admission teams as well, so that they know you put in the effort or whatever you say is true. So use chat GPT for reference points, but make your statement of purpose your own. The colleges value your, so when I was speaking with the admissions team later on, after joining my college, they were saying that they want what you have to offer, what actually you as a person has to offer. It doesn't actually mean your high grades or your high uh, accomplishments. Sometimes it's the it's what you can bring to your the table as a character. So yeah, make sure that you can balance that out when you are using chat GPT or when you're using any tools for making an SOP. Yeah, I love that. Um, can you, Sonu or Aryan, do you want to come in on that? Would you recommend using, using? I mean, is there a, a smart way to use use ChatGPT, do you think? Or, or would you just be like, no, 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 please just don't even think about it. Yeah, no, I would literally like share a question here. Like if you ask ChatGPT, what is the square root of nine? So just check, go on ChatGPT today and check for what's the square root of nine. Mm. So what will be the answer? And you can know that you should be following chat GPT for your SOP or not. Just go and check. Just have a look that what chat GPT gives you the answer. And then yeah. you will know. Yeah, you have to, how much you have to follow chat GPT. Yes, you can have the literal, like you can have an idea from chat GPT that these points should be considered while con making an SOP for yourself or creating an essay. But don't just cut, copy, paste the whole stuff from chat gpt 
because I, this was shared by my professor like he was telling us in the class that uh, okay you people did your assignments from chat gpt that's very <laughs> good <laughs> but he asked us to just check for the square root of 9 so it was like yes we should not be following chat gpt 100% yeah so i would like all the students to just check for the square root of 9 and you'll get the answer that how much you should go in for chat gpt yeah. <laughs> Aryan thoughts as someone doing an MBA plus data science, you know, pretty competitive uh, admissions process. Would you have chosen to use ChatGPT? Um, so, yeah, uh, as both of them mentioned, no, don't like put it right as SOP for me and copy paste it. Uh, SOP is very personalized. You know, uh, you have to make it about yourself. You have to tell your story through SOP and you have to sell yourself. ChatGPT cannot do it for you. What you can do is like ask ChatGPT, what does a very strong SOP has? Take, look at the points. If it, it can pull out some examples for you, it might ask for that. But apart from that, don't go in and just like type in the query that please write a SOP for me. Um, that won't work. Uh, just for SOP, it's not hard. It's all about how you can leverage your strong points, how you can sell them to the B school, how how you can you know show them that yeah you got this, you can be part of a professional community for two years and then yeah. uh, you you are very good to go and join the professional world out there. So yeah, yeah, it's literally like the first sort of first way to like a first branding and marketing exercise in, in that sense, right? Really getting you ready for, for business school. Um, so Sushmita asks, can you break down what should be the most effective format for an SOP? Um, and I don't know if you have, um, you know, all three of you have access to maybe your SOPs that got you into these particular programs, or if you remember um, sort of how you worked out that that process or, you know, how many iterations it took. Um, maybe Anisha, I can start with you. Do you remember sort of how you came and how you crafted that narrative in, in, for that, for instance, you talked about telling that story, you know, presenting yourself as that character. Um, um, can you tell us a little bit about you know more details like how did you actually write your SOP? So uh, yeah, my SOP I used to refer a lot of people's SOPs. I went and read a, like I I remember that when I was applying, I read for at least I read at least ten to twenty SOPs uh, of people. Uh, but then I realized okay, this is not what I wanted to do, and my SOP was sort of my own. I would say. I had six paragraphs in total. My first paragraph was what I am looking to do in the future. So that is like any business statement. My problem statement was the first uh, paragraph. And from the next paragraph was like from my journey from childhood, which so I was applying for my MBA. I only applied for MBA anywhere. So I for, from my next paragraph was all situations in my life. Let's just say from school which for pushed me towards going into management. Why I felt that I want to be a, an MBA student, why I wanted to be a manager in future. And my this went from high school to undergrad, then my work, uh, this was my next three paragraphs. And then I concluded overall at the end by uh, saying my goals after my MBA. So uh, putting it out there, my goal is like after when, uh, in my late 30s or like 35 to 40, I want to be a CEO of a MNC. So that's my goal. And that is where my MBA is going to take. So that is how I concluded my uh, SOP. So I would recommend the, that process. Like you have your own you know, thought process, your goals in life and why you are going to do this. You have your reasons. And just don't say that your reason is to go out of India. That may be a reason, a reason maybe also for me it was to study in New York but don't put it like that frame it in such a way that why New York is going to be the best opportunity for you to you know go there so one of my the paragraph before the last was like why New York is the best opportunity for me to you know leverage and becoming you know going into my next level of uh, career I love that. Um, Aryan, do you have, do you remember sort of what it was that got you into to well I'm at? As uh, Anish mentioned, know yourself. Uh, like uh, he knew about, he wanted to be in New York. Uh, I want, I knew that I wanted to be in Pacific Northwest. So ask yourself that and 
it's and it's totally fine if you are not uh, like area agnostic in the us you just want it to be in the us that's fine too uh, so uh, i would like go through my sop uh, i have pulled it up and wait a second yeah uh, so yeah okay, start with like uh, uh, so start with like uh, introducing normal stuff uh, then go about like uh, what did you do why you did it how well if you did like it pretty well just highlight it uh, that will sell you uh, apart from that if you worked uh, talk about your professional experience what you did uh, how it can relate to mba that's very super important every point you make try to relate it to the mba and how like it would make you a very strong candidate for the program talk about uh, short term and long term long term goals that you have super important for the mba having that clarity and then concluding uh, that why you are a strong fit for this school apart from this address the questions why this program why i mean that includes why this university and then why this area if you want to like why the us and if you are particular about your area let's first say you want to be in new york, new york talk about why new york if you not talk about why the us you love the job market or you love the opportunities that the us economy has to offer whatever you want to talk about talk about it and uh, these four five points if you follow this structure it should be fine yeah, fantastic. I thank you so much for taking out your actual SOP and sort of talking us through it. Uh, Sony, do you remember, I, I know that you talked about sort of visiting the, you know, the year before and really wanting to apply to NGIT Techman specifically. Um, and, you know, you're doing sort of what we what we like to call sort of a mini MBA. Um, but what was it about your SOP that you think, you know, really got you in? Yeah, the points aren't shared. Like you have to think about four or five things that have to be there. Like first, why US? Why abroad? Okay. Then second, which city or which part of US? Then third, what is your concentration you want to go in for? Like it should be related to your previous study or what, what you have done in your career. Like if you are working, you have experience, then how will you inculcate that experience into your next master's? So that thing, and then which school, like why this school? Like if you have, I, I would add here, not, don't apply for just one or two, apply for as many schools as you want. Like when you go in for your visa interview, the visa officer will ask you that how many schools you have applied for. And you have to have the, uh, like try to get the admit from all the schools, maximum of the schools, so that you can say that, yes, I am a good applicant. Like I'll be good for US because US need US doesn't US has not asked you to come, but you are going there. So you have to show them that yes, I am a good student. I'll be a, a positive thing, a positive person for US. So I would like to add these all these points in your SOP. Fantastic. I love that. And actually, that's something I want to talk a little bit about because all three, three of you have very different profiles. Um, and I want to spend some time talking about. How did you incorporate those kinds of things in your SOPs? You know, how did you really bring out your personalities and make sure that your admissions teams are seeing you beyond just your GRE, GMAT, your TOEFL, IELTS, your you know, CGPA, all of those kinds of things. They're just the numbers and all the, the boring things. How did you show personality in your application? Uh, and Anish, maybe I can throw that to you first. You know, you talked a little bit about how you pivoted from engineering to management. Um, you have a very interesting story. You've worked in a startup for two years. Um, how did you talk about yourself uh, in a way that really showed you as, as a real person? Uh, so basically, my SOP was uh, structured in that way as a story. So I was, uh, my intention was to, you know, whoever is reading my SOP is going to read a story. Uh, the story of my life till when I'm going to do my MBA. So I added, so let's, for example, I'm going, to, I'm doing my management, right? I'm doing MBA. So my first part of the story was, you know, uh, yeah, I want to do my MBA because I started my story in high school when I first organized an event in school, which was a national debate competition, which showed my interest into management. But I was not sure because due to an Indian culture where you either become an engineer or a doctor, I was pushed to that stream. And yeah, I became, I decided to do my engineering. And while I did my engineering, I 
got exposed to the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, which was a club in the college. And I came to the US twice for meetings for that particular club. So I wrote about that and I told them, okay, when I came to the US, I realized that I really belonged in an international setting and my focus or my uh, passion was in management. So I was able to bring out that part, so bring a relation why during my mechanical engineering degree, my passion was always management. And then after I completed my undergrad, I was able to, you know, immediately pivot, not do anything in mechanical engineering, but immediately applied as a management intern in a startup. And I worked there for two years, grew up in the ladders as an assistant, till an assistant manager. And then I realized, okay, to grow up further, I need a background in management. So for the next eight months, uh, I was like thinking, okay, what am I going to do? I started applying, okay, my goal is US. I want to go to New York. I want to work there for a few years. And then I started applying for colleges in New York. So this was the process that I told in the story. So I made them realize, okay, I don't think anywhere in my SOP, I mentioned my uh, GMAT or ILTS score. I was just framing it as a story so that, you know, when they read it, it's easy for them. So let's just say I was working in HR before, before, you know, uh, like in the startup, you get to do different roles. So I was also working as an HR. So reading through people's uh, resumes, their, what do you say, uh, cover letters, it's more about, you know, being entertained by, it. you know, not being bored about reading through a lot of uh, things that is same you know if someone is telling their own passionate story it shows their passion into their job and even for a college it shows that okay when you're coming here they are going to show that passion in that institute yeah yeah and I think a lot of times you know as a student who's applying you're sort of applying to multiple universities you've got so much paperwork to do you kind of forget that there's actual human beings that are looking at these applications and really want to you know see you succeed and really see Sure, you're choosing them, but they also need a reason to choose you. Uh, and what could that reason be? And I think, you know, SOPs and essays and interviews are such fantastic opportunities to really showcase yourself as, you know, yes, I am the perfect candidate for you. Um, Sona, would you like to come in on that? Because you have a fascinating journey uh, to get to business school. If you can tell us a little bit about that and sort of, you know, how did you talk about that experience and sort of where, where you are now? Mm -hmm. And thank you. Uh, yeah, so I would like to share my own experience here. Uh, I've been working as assistant professor from last 14 years in Chandigarh in Government College. Uh, I was taking up classes for bachelors of computer science and masters in information technology. Uh, but uh, as the scenario was, I was listening about uh, the recession, like the technology, the tech people are not having jobs or something like that. So I was like, yes, if I have to go to US, so I have to club my technology to something so that I can be a good person or I can have a job in, in my hand after my master's. So I thought, yes, a management course with a combination of technology would be a perfect combination for me to land up in US with a good job. So that's how I tried to figure out for a course for myself that it, it might be master's in science and management with business analytics because business analytics is taken as a first step like after that it is data sciences you can upgrade yourself so but as an introductory to enter it is like business analytics is the first step you can take like it is a combination of management and technology so this is how I figured out for myself like yes I have to be there and my teaching experience in India I could not really get something in my hand with that teaching experience so I had to upgrade myself. And I think that to enter in another country, there are two ways. First is job and the second is education. So I didn't have job in my hand. So I thought of taking education and education. It had to be clubbed with my experience and my previous study. So my master's in computer applications. And then I thought, yes, now a degree in management would be a good combination for myself. So that's how I landed up in doing MSM. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Um, Aryan, you know, let's talk a little bit about your program because that'll help explain sort of how you made that switch in, into business school. It's it's a very specific 
MBA program. It's an early career, career change MBA. Um, how did you talk about your switch from sort of being a German language specialist and you know, having all these you know, two very, or five very interesting years of experience and then coming, in, coming into an MBA? Yeah, uh, before I start that, uh, I would like to like congratulate Tono. That's, that's a fa fantastic journey. That's really good. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. So yeah, but yeah, uh, about my journey. Uh, so I come from a very different background, German studies. So uh, what I did was I leveraged what I was interested in. Uh, I talked about, I'm interested in international relations and geopolitics, you know, and how every big company now is MNC, multinational company. So how I can like put my experience from there I had subjects like that, Indochina relations, uh, European Union subjects like that. I studied that. So I just put that there, you know, that my interest in this can be leveraged in multinational companies who are operating in now multiple countries, dozens of countries at the same time. And uh, I want to be switched, like go into the international business segment and stuff like that, because it's about breaking in the college. It doesn't matter what you do afterwards, to be honest and things change. It's not like that you are lying to them. It's like things change. When I came here, I came only for MBA, but when I started doing data in the first semester, I realized how much I loved problem solving, how much I would like to utilize it. And I just, uh, after taking the first course in the first semester, I realized I, I might do as well data science as well, and I got in. So yeah, so starting with, the, so I talked about my leadership, uh, I had like throughout my academic journey for right from school, I had held leadership position. I talked about that, how I'm pretty good with people because um, uh, management is all about people, to be honest. It's, it's everything else. It's, uh, it's about how you manage the people. So talk about stuff. Talk about like look into yourself. What, what you think is you can, you excel at and you can connect it with your MBA. You know, what skills do you have? And just leverage that. Uh, apart from that, yeah, I talked about uh, my interest in international relations, my leadership position, uh, my interest in problem solving, and how I have always been interested in management. And uh, how, uh, and then as you mentioned, it's the early career or career change. So it was not hard for me to sell that I want to change my career from what I'm doing currently to to the management track. So that was not that hard, but yeah. Fantastic. And we've got some really interesting questions coming in the Q&A box. I definitely want to take some time to, to answer those. Um, first question, <laughs> is it okay to add humor in an SOP? What are your thoughts? Uh, Sonu, maybe we can start with you. Would you add humor in, in an SOP or would you recommend it? Uh, like Anish said, it should be in the form of a story. Yes. So while you are continuing with your career, like, yes, a tagline can be added, but it should be like, it is your, it is you who you are telling what kind of a person you are. It's you. It's your image. Basically the person sitting in abroad, he doesn't know you. So that's your image. That's your picture. So yes. It is not wrong. You, you. Uh, it's like yes, you can add humor, but like it should be um, a decent one. Yes, a tagline can be there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you're gonna add humor, be smart about it. Don't sort of yeah. force it. If it yeah, makes yeah. sense in your story, in your story, sure, mm -hmm. go ahead. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Anish, what are your thoughts? Would you recommend adding humor? So I would piggyback on what Sono said, like exactly, be smart about what you place in your, uh, uh, what do you say, SOP. Make sure when you are reading it, you don't, you know, feel it's okay, this person. At the end of the day, when you read your own SOP, you should be proud of yourself. If yeah. you feel that way, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aryan that's that's thought... the end goal. Yeah. Um, just one line, uh, re make someone else read your SOP for yourself and make sure you doesn't come out as a clown okay if you're adding humor make sure it's not it's very professional people love interesting people that's the thing especially over here people like working with people who are cool and who are interesting you know so that's fine uh, but make sure it's very relevant uh very decent and yeah yeah make any two three people 
make them read your SOP. If if they they recommend it, they are like, yeah, uh, this doesn't portray you as a as a person who is not serious, is not a clown. Okay, you are good to go. It's if it's like it's it, because it's all about as uh, Anish mentioned how you are perceived. You would be perceived on based based on your SOP, mm -hmm. right? Because they don't know you. They didn't have your interview yet. They would decide they will go with the interview after the SOP and your whole application. So I would say, yeah, it has to be very professional. It's a, it's a tough work, but yeah. I love that advice. So super practical. So if you're going to add humor, be smart about it. Show your personality because that's the whole idea of an SOP. But maybe have a couple of people that you know and trust and respect. Maybe read through it before you hit that send button. Excellent advice. Um, another question coming in. Is it wise to highlight words or phrases in your SOP? Or should one just work efficiently by dividing the content into paragraphs? How to make an SOP catchy to the eye in the first impression? Interesting question. Sort of formatting related. Like, does it make sense to go crazy or just keep it simple? thoughts uh anisha i'll come to you first i would say in an sop highlighting wouldn't be a good part based on my experience or however sops that i have read i have never seen that uh so i can't advocate that um so i would say just making it paragraph wise not having like again it's a story so a story does not going it's not going to have highlighted points or bullet points you just get captured through the story at one particular point is that it brings focus okay you are you are going to remember that part of the story or the moral of the story which is, here is you you are the moral of your sop you are the character that is standing out in the sop so i think it's about showing that through your words and i think yeah formatting it is won't be a good option as far as i think yeah. Any strong thoughts on formatting from Sonu or R? And otherwise, I can go to the next question. Yeah. The same. Yeah. Uh, the formatting should be the bullets and the, everything. It should be like paragraph form. And the paragraphs should have the typical content, like the first paragraph, what you want to add, second, third, fourth, fifth. And mm -hmm. last would should, should be uh, what next? What after this completion of your course, what will be your next step? So uh, I don't think so. Bulleting or keeping some caps or something like that won't work. Yeah, okay. uh, I would just add to that. Uh, first, write the layout for the SOP, then write the SOP. That's pretty clear uh, by right now, you know. Talk of like first write down four or five paragraphs that you would talk about, headline them. And then once you're done with that, then start writing SOP. And in writing mostly the first line of the para, you talk about that line in the para. That's the topic for that. So it's like mini essay within the essay. So that's a that's a way to go. No highlighting, no bullet points as other mentioned. Absolutely. Excellent advice. I love that sort of your each paragraph, think of it as sort of complete and of its own. Have your first sentence really be that strong, decisive statement that says, and then sort of in, in, in expand on it within that paragraph. Great advice. Adil asks, uh, and then I think, you know, I want to move on from SOP because there's so much more in, in, a, in, a, in a business plan uh, application. But Adil asks, in your opinion, is a well-written SOP much more important than GMAT and undergraduate scores? For example, I heard that schools accepted a, a 3.4 GPA because of a candidate's SOP instead of a 4.3 person. Um, what are your thoughts? Do you think an SOP can really like make or break a business school application? Um, I can take that one. Uh, for sure, in a business, any any business school here, uh, so uh, as far as I know, it has a grading structure for everything. So it's like 25% for this, 15% for this. It may be like 25% for your grade, 15% for your resume, 15% for your SOP. So everything has a weightage. So if your grades are strong, you get that 25%. But at the same time, if your SOP is strong, it gets that 15%. I know for a fact that each school values each of these things differently. So they have their own acceptance criteria. So it depends on each school that you're applying at if an SOP, so, and we won't know that earlier on. We just know that these are the requirements. 
but mm -hmm. yeah definitely it can be possible that someone with a very good sop gets more weightage on that side and gets accepted uh, without you know a really good score but it's it can't be certain it's not something that we can say for certain it's it depends on the school and depends on who is grading you or which admissions team is taking care of you what they value at that point maybe they have a lot of order for my MBA cohort there we have I was speaking to the team and they were like yeah we wanted people to round it up you know I am the youngest person in my cohort so mm -hmm. everyone is other than that is 30s or 35 my score my uh, academic score during undergrad was not that good my GMAT score is pretty decent but they wanted someone like me who has an experience from startups and an experience from a different sector that no one else in the cohort has so that I can round it up, you know, that was what they were valuing. So it depends on what the admissions team is looking for. That's such an interesting insight, I think, because so many times people sort of just look at, you know, what are typical classes like, you know, what is a, a certain GMAT score required for X business school? You know, what are the GPA requirements for X business school? What are the previous class profiles looking like? And sort of, you know, sometimes check off really great schools and programs simply because they think they're not going to be able to, to make it in just based on certain numbers or certain other criteria. Uh, and I think the whole idea of today is to sort of really offer up the, you know, the counter argument to that is you can really sell yourself well in places like SOPs, in places like in interviews, which is what I want to spend the next sort of, you know, 10, 15 minutes talking about. Did all of you have questions, uh, have interviews as part of your application process uh, on Anish, Aryan. I know Aryan, you did. Yeah. Anish and Sonu, did you guys have interviews as well? Yeah. 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 Okay. Excellent. Because yes. I really want to spend some time on that. I think it's such an underrated part of the application process. And that's something that's really in your control, right? You may have given the GMAT, GRE once, twice, and, you know, sort of that happened. Those scores went in. Your GPA, of course, you know, over your college career was a certain score, but you could really prep for an interview and it can really change things around for you. you know, perhaps you'll even get a higher scholarship based on sort of how, how you perform in that interview, uh, among other things. Uh, so Sonu, maybe I can start with you. Can you tell me a little bit about what that interview process was like? How did you prepare for it? Uh, and then, you know, I'd love to hear from all of you. And then I also want to ask, like, do you remember specific questions that, that you had uh, to answer? Yeah, uh, so I had B1, B2 visa and my counselor, he said that, yes, a drop down would work for, work for you because they will not be calling for an interview. So I was like comfortable that, yes, I'll not go had have to face a interview process. But then um, some 20 days after my application was submitted and everything, I got a letter that, yes, you have to face the interview. So I went and I was like pretty scared, like, yes. Because I had an experience of 14 years and, and my education gap was lots. So that was the main area I was like, how to cover that up? Like the officer will be like, after 20 years, why again into education? Yeah. yeah so Wait, you're talking about the US visa interview, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. okay go. Sorry. I was talking about sort of business school application interviews or like business, like for Tuckman and things like that. But I do okay. want to hear your, okay. I want to hear your experience okay. because a lot of okay. people ask us about the U.S. visa process. So maybe go ahead and then I'll, I'll talk about the. Okay. No, it's f sorry for, uh, I couldn't no, get it's you. absolutely fine. Okay. So I landed, I was like, my counselor gave me around 14 to 15 questions that are usually asked by the officer even if you follow the chat gpt chat gpt would give you the answer like what all questions should be prepared for the visa interview so there are around 20 a list of 20 questions usually students prepare for that and i remember that last night when i in the morning i had to go i was like just uh, write, writing the answers again and again again and again like yes what I have to speak in front of the officer <laughs> And I still remember that night I could not sleep like, yes, <laughs> what will happen and what what will come in, because we really don't know what the person sitting against that window is thinking about you. So I remember one question from him. Uh, he was like, yes, you are saying you have done your master's in India. So why second master's? So I was like, yeah, I, I was prepared for that question. So I was like, yeah, because it's my master's in computer applications. And now it's a combination of computer applications with management. That's a good combination. So that's why I want to go in for management. Yeah. 
so that was my visa interview and he was like pretty happy with my answer and he was like yes you are accepted <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. I'm going to come back to you on, on sort of the B-School uh, interview, but I actually want to quickly ask Anish and Aryan as well. Do you have recollections of what it was like for that dreaded, you know, F1 uh, visa interview, what that process was like? Do you guys remember what kinds of questions you were asked or sort of how you prepped for that process? Um, Aryan, maybe I can start with you and then Anish. Uh, you're talking about F1, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my F1 uh, visa interview was pretty short. I think max two minutes. Uh, I think he asked only one question to me: Why will I meet? And I just answered it because uh, I just tell, told told. Uh, and he also mentioned in that question there was like it was several questions clubbed together. He was like, "How did you get to know about Willamant? It's not like a huge university out there." So I told him generally how I. So I was looking at the profile of C of Deloitte, Mr. Puneet Ranjan, who is an Indian, and he graduated from Willamette back then. So that's how I got to know about Willamette in the first place. And then I talked about how uh, I wanted to be in Pacific Northwest, and I wanted my debt to be low, and I was looking for a good scholarship and stuff like that. So structure it. So it could be longer interview. Mine was pretty short. Uh, for some reason, uh, I got lucky or something, but yeah. So it depends like uh, where you go. Uh, mine was in Kolkata uh, because uh, in Delhi, my slot was later. So I just booked Kolkata and went there. Uh, but it depends on which consulate, which embassy you are going, stuff like that. But yeah. So as Sonu mentioned, prepare a list of questions. There are a list of questions out there you can see. Just prepare them pretty well and it should be all right. It's uh, US is granting visas as per now, so you should be good. Yeah. Anish, any thoughts on sort of your U.S. visa uh, uh, interview? And, I, and then I'm going to come back to your actual B-School interview after that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a, a visa interview. I actually had a U.S. visa earlier, so I just got the it waivered. Yeah, but as far as my friends who all did the process or whoever I helped is the same thing that Sonia mentioned, like I have a list of questions prepared. And don't go there to lie. Just, you know, have answers prepared which are actually true because I feel, you know, they are very good at reading your body language. So just be clear on what you want to show. Yeah, fantastic. Great, great tips from everyone. Okay, um, Anisha, I'm going to start with you and we'll just go in reverse order. Do you remember what your interview process was like for for your, for your CUNY? Um, you know, did you have... Uh, was it who who conducted the interview? What kind of questions did they ask? How did you prepare for it? Uh, yeah, so uh, during my interview process, it was like two people. I took the interview against two people. One was for uh, one person was from from the admissions team. The second person was from my department, uh, the department of executive uh, of management. And I basically had three questions. I remember them clearly. One is, uh, can you tell us about yourself, you know, the basic, your elevator pitch. Uh, the second part was, have you had a situation in your workplace where you had to deal with uh, uh, an uncertainty and how did you deal with that situation? And the third question was, have you had a situation where you had to collaborate with different types of people, people from different backgrounds? How were you able to manage that situation? Did you find a problem in doing that? So these were the three questions that I had. Awesome. Uh, Aryan, what about you? What was that interview process like? Who asked the questions? Um, and did it change things around for you at all? Um, yeah, for me, it was Dean, uh, Associate Dean. Uh, and so it was a long interview, uh, interview for me. It was like 30 minutes. Uh, uh, I don't remember like all the questions, but of course the starters tell me about yourself, why will I met, why MBA right now? So it was not why, why MBA, why MBA right now? How, why you want to switch right now and stuff like that. Then, uh, then if I can remember correctly, it was about how confident you are that you can make switch from your background to an MBA where this would be quant and stuff like that, you know? 
uh, you you didn't have exposure to quantitative methods back then in your undergrad or your work life. So so yeah. So again, make a list of questions. There are a list of questions available. Talk to other people who already have done that. You know, make a comprehensive list of questions. Then there could be situational questions too. So uh, pretty decent advice. There's a format called STAR, Situation, Task, Action, Reserve. Uh, they could be there as uh, Anish mentioned, how like uh, instead of asking how you do well with others, they can ask you, tell about a time where you were in a difficult spot within, difficult spot within a team. So then you uh, like, like come up with STAR format and yeah uh, apart from that the whole goal of your application process is to land that interview so that's your chance to do well make it about yourself uh, kind of like try to take hold of it from the interviewer i would even suggest that it depends on how rigorously you prepare for the interview being nervous is fine they know you might be nervous so that's all right but just get into the game and like yeah and Final advice, make a very like robust list of questions you want to ask, make them as hard as you can. That, that, that shows you that you are really interested. You have done your research and you, you are like asking good questions is a very important part. It could be like 30% of the interview if you should really ask good questions because now they know you are really interested, you did your research. You are not just someone who is like, yeah, slacking off. So that, that would be my advice. Yeah, great advice. Use that time to make it a, a dialogue, not just sort of an interrogation or an interview per se. Love that. Uh, Sono, do you remember who interviewed you and sort of what the questions were like uh, for Techman? Uh, no, I didn't face any interview like for the admission. My paperwork, my experience was like they were satisfied and I haven't heard like NJIT puts in for interviews. Your SOPs, your essays and your GPA, it makes an admit for you for NJIT. Got it, got it. And actually, I'm curious, you know, we haven't really necessarily talked about essays. Uh, so do you remember what the essays were like or what kinds of essays uh, you had to fill? Uh, no, for grad, NJIT doesn't ask, ask for essays. Okay. So I had to submit my SOP. So I was like, I, that was my condition, yeah. Got it, got it. Anish and Aryan, were there essays, were, were they part of your process, your admissions application process? Yeah. I just, uh, I forgot about that we had to submit an essay, so I just pulled <laughs> it up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one question was, why are you looking to pursue an MBA or MS at this point in your life? What mm -hmm. do you see yourself doing professionally upon graduation? What key actions have you taken up to this point to prepare you for this career? This was one of the questions. So, and the second question was discuss a social issue that you feel strongly about and how you will contribute to the solution. These were the two essays that we had to do. Yeah. So I think no. we had three essays and we could choose any two. So I did these two. Very interesting. Aryan, do you remember where essays part of your process as well? Again, if I'm right, they were none. It was okay. SOP. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I have written essays for other universities. Yeah. And mostly, as Anish mentioned, two or three. So max would be three, I guess. Uh, and if it, they are more, they would be like 150 words, 200 words max. So gotcha. it, it wouldn't be that hard. Uh, SOP is like more important. Yeah. But, Actually, so that's a question that we had come in. Um, you know, uh, how do you juggle? Because obviously, you know, your SOP is so much about a reflection of who you are. But presumably you're applying to multiple schools, multiple different kinds of programs. Uh, you know, perhaps you're applying to an MBA in one place or maybe an MS in management in another. Um, are you rewriting the same SOP in slightly different ways? Are you writing a completely new SOP from scratch? Um, you know, I think Aryan and Anish, both of you applied to multiple schools. Uh, how did you how tackle, did you tackle that? Uh, and, um, and Anish, maybe I can start with you first. Uh, yeah, so for me, I had a base format for my SOP because I only applied for MBA. So I only had to change the parts where the school is different. And I only applied in New York as well. So the state, the country, all of them say remain the same. That school and why I chose that school, that part changed. 
that first paragraph changed from school to school. But for me, other than that, it was pretty easy because I was only applying in New York. I only applied for MBA. So it was pretty easy for me. Um, but it, similar yeah. from, oh, sorry, yeah, go. Yeah, I would recommend that if you are applying for different schools and different uh, places and, you know, then your SOP should be different at different points, you know, what a different courses, definitely it should be different. You should tailor if you are going for MS Business Analytics, you should, you know, tailor your SOP that flows towards business analytics. We, let's just say you're going for applying for MBA as well, then tailor it through MBA. Let's just say MBA in business analytics, as Sonu, uh, like as Sonu mentioned, it should be like, you know, why you want to do management and you think business analytics is going to take you there, you know, that, that flow is very important. And you have to, you know, figure it out for each application. Yeah, great advice. Okay, I we're almost completely out of time. We're in the last four minutes. We still have a couple of questions that we haven't had time to address um, all, you know, around SOPs. Uh, but I was very curious to know uh, if all of you could share with me. Um, one, how long were your SOPs? Like, do you remember where they're like a thousand words or 500 words or just a rough idea if you remember? Uh, sort of did that, or was there a word limit um, that was enforced by by the university? Mine was a full A4 page, so 1200 words, I guess, but yeah, something like that. Full A4 page for me. Yeah. Yeah. And until it's, it is specified, don't break that limit, both in your resume until you are like have worked for 20 years or something. So keep it one page, uh, look for the instructions like pretty clear ask ask admissions team they are pretty helpful with stuff like that so yeah hmm. yeah i think that's an underrated resource as well a lot of times people like i said forget that there's real people on the other side of this applications process looking at your applications um and i would highly recommend you know all their contact details are available. They make it very easy for you to get in touch with them. That's the whole idea. They want you to talk to them, especially as prospective students. Um, you know, they want to get to know you as you're applying, before you apply, after you've applied, um, you know, as offer them whatever information that you need, whatever clarifications that you need. Um, so the best thing to do is look up the admissions um, team for the program that you're you're applying to, uh, write to them. A lot of them already have like their calendars open. You can just book a slot um, and sort of talk, you know, on Zoom uh, for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is. Uh, it's really an excellent and underrated resource to talk directly to the universities you're applying to and really get these kinds of questions answered. They're there, they're there to support you through your application. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I would like to add yeah. a point very really quickly. I'm working in admissions team right now for international students. I can tell you that people are very approachable. The admission load is not that much as back in India. So you would hear back, it would just take time. Uh, in If your small, university is not that big in the size, uh, you, would, you would hear back within two, three days max. So just hear out, people are much more open to the cold emails too. I saw one question about something like that. So people are, you can imagine uh, who can reply to, even CEOs can reply to. One of my friends got a job at CFO's office because just he emailed him. And so you just need to cold email or stuff like that, email, you would get a response. Don't worry about that. So utilize that. I love that. In the land of opportunities, take your shot, shoot your shot, take that opportunity. It's sort of willing to hear. And I think now it's so easy, right, to, to figure out ways to get in touch with someone. If not, if their email isn't listed on their website, look them up on LinkedIn. Somewhere you, you will find out a way to, to figure out how to get in touch with them. Uh, Anish and Sonu, any sort of last thoughts as we as we sort of wrap? Same, I would like to add, as Aryan said, I am also working with the admissions in NJIT for the grad students. And I have created a WhatsApp group so I've emailed to everyone so they can connect to me anytime. Like I know when it's night in India, so it's U US time is morning. So little time difference is there, but uh, you can hear from admissions. And I don't, yeah, as he said, service industry in US is like perfect. They give services like, yes, they own you. Like first you start your application and the university starts to own you. That's the best. And do write to them. Do ask whatever you want to. And you'll, 100%, you'll get the reply. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anish, any sort of last thoughts or advice that you can have to someone that's applying to business school right now? 
Yeah, just one thing. Reply to all of your emails that you get. Reply, think about it. People are sent, taking time out from their lives, especially the admissions team. They are sending out, you know, all your questions that you ask, they're, they're responding to you. So say, take a second to say a thank you, you know. Uh, I don't know for everyone, but I feel that that's a huge thing. You know, that's your first step in courtesy and your first step if you are going to put your put in the door and if that person who is checking your application is in the interview, she's going to think, okay, this guy replied to all of my emails and he's like, you know, a very formal and uh, and a person with a lot of etiquette. And that's that's a good thing, you know, that's going to stay impacted. That's, for, that's something I heard during my first day of class from my business communication. So it, it was like, you know, it's something that's very true. You hear back, it's it feels good. Exactly. And I think, you know, it's just another step along the way of showing yourself as, as a full person, that holistic view of who you really are as a candidate uh, beyond test scores, beyond just sort of the numbers and things like that. So it's it's a great and underrated way and, and a really easy and polite thing to do. Just acknowledge the messages and, you know, write back, be professional, show a little bit, bit of personality even there, um, you know, as and when it's appropriate. Excellent advice. I want to thank all three of you for taking time out on a Wednesday morning for you guys um, to come and speak to the grad right student community. Uh, you know, we get questions all the time on Instagram while we're talking to students about sort of the application process. Uh, so thank you so much for, for taking the time and really shining the light. Uh, you know, I feel like uh, we could have talked for hours and we barely scratched yeah. the surface, you know, as it goes in terms of, of business school applications. Uh, so hopefully we can continue um, and, you know, invite you guys back on uh, for the next in our series on Blueprint, whenever you have the time available to spare for us. Uh, you know, this is a brand new series that we've started. Uh, you know, we really wanted to make sure that we had time uh, to bring in Indian student perspectives, you know, on the admissions process, you know, really hear it like it is, uh, you know, for students that are applying to the U.S., specifically for fall this year and, and in the future as well. You know, I think these kinds of conversations are hugely valuable to anyone wherever they are in their, in their study abroad journey. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, lovely seeing you and uh, hopefully I'll see you again yeah thank you Priyanka have a good day and I would like thank to share you, if you want to share the email IDs the students want to connect they can so you Wonderful. can share yeah, our email love IDs you. Do let us know what is the best way if students have questions or if they'd like to sort of continue this conversation with you. Uh, you know, maybe yeah. they have questions about your particular program, about your school. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the best way to get in touch? The email ID, I, I suppose we can share our email IDs or you, if you are in yeah. contact with the students. Yeah. So you can just, yeah. Done. Done. Yeah. For, yeah, for me, I would recommend uh, LinkedIn and email. Both is the best option yeah. so that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, email works for me as well. LinkedIn works as well. And thank Amazing. you so much, Priyanka. It yes, thank you so much. I feel again, you know, I'm going to invite you guys back on. I feel like I have so much more that I want to talk to you about. And you guys were so candid and so open and sort of sharing your own journeys. Thank you so much uh, for tapping into your experience and sharing that with our grad right student community. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful rest of your day uh, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.